Okay, so we're gonna weigh out right around one gram of N-bromosuccinamide. Remember, it's just a right around one gram. So whatever we end up recording um, or measuring out, we'll record the exact mass. So we're gonna use a weighing paper um, to kind of make this transfer a little easier later. You can fold it. Once we put it, we can click on tear. It's at 1.30. So I'm gonna record one point. I'm gonna give it a second. And then I'm going to record that as my initial mass of N bromosuccinamide. 1. All right. 1.32 grams or 30. Okay. Well, remember, your very last digit is your uncertainty digit, all right? So 1.3 Okay. Let's go. It's the air in the room as well. 1.30 is going to have to be it. So I'm going to transfer that right into the flask. Make sure you don't um, drop any because if you drop any, what will happen is that your initial mass is no longer accurate. So notice there's nothing left on the filter paper. I mean, the weighing paper, everything uh, that we needed of NBS is right in the flask and we didn't really make any sort of mass. So we've measured um, some DI water, and what we're going to do is heat up the water. So I've already plugged it in, and I will heat it up. Well, it looks like it may not be connected well from the back. Okay, and there we go. So we don't want our stir on, but we do want to heat it up. I'm going to heat it up near... Um, boiling, right? Remember, it's turning on, it's caution hot, you definitely don't want to touch the hot plate, and you definitely don't want to um, touch the flask as it's going to start to get hot, right? But approximately 15 milliliters of water, I did add a little more than that, so I can actually empty that, some of it out, in case it starts to boil. So you want it right around 95 degrees. You don't necessarily need the thermometer on there. You'll notice it's just right around its boiling point, right? So the whole idea is what we're going to be doing is recrystallization of crude NBS. So we've already weighed 1.3 grams of crude NBS, and what we're going to do is try to purify it. And recrystallization is really a purification technique for solid compounds. And the idea is that we're trying to remove any um, impurities that may be present. So we want our, so what type of solvent do we pick for recrystallization? We want one where our compound of interest will be soluble in a hot recrystallization solvent. And we're simply using water as our recrystallization solvent. But we also want our compound of interest to be insoluble once that um, is cooled down, right? So that allows for the formation of pure crystals. We're gonna talk about the fact that we have to allow it to um, cool down slowly, right? But we want the impurities to be soluble in the solvent system, which is water, regardless if it was hot or cold. All right, so while we wait on the wa water to reach about 95 degrees Celsius, what we're going to do is set up the vacuum filtration. What we're going to do is set up um, the apparatus for the suction filtration. What we're going to be using is um, a sidearm flask. It has a thicker glass um, to kind of take in the reduced pressure when we actually set up the suction filtration because we're going to attach it to a vacuum. Um, we are going to use the Bushner funnel and we have to um, secure it on the actual flask. Right? It's really important to secure our three um, arm flask or our um, filter flask to the back support. Right? So we're gonna use the clamp. Right? Wanna set it at a height where it's gonna hold it right in place. Once 
and it's important to do that so that it doesn't tip over once you start turn you know once you start filtering the product and you turn on the vacuum okay so you want it to kind of hold it right at the neck of the flask and I'm gonna go ahead and lower the flask so it's actually touching the bench top okay and then we are ready to connect it to the vacuum line um, you want to make sure you're actually connecting it to the proper line so you want to go ahead and connect it to the vacuum line and I'll show you the colors really indicate you know um, what are you connecting it to I'll show you in a second and then we can connect it to the And notice we are using thick rubber tubing specifically used for the vacuum and then what we're going to do is add a filter paper right this filter paper they come in different sizes so you want to make sure it fits right within so we're going to take one if you slightly release it you'll notice that's where you'll filter so we want to do is add a filter paper. You can either weigh the filter paper on its own, or you could take this, you know, the top of the buster funnel and weigh it out. It would sit right perfectly on the balance. And then at the end, when you collect the product right in here, you can re-weigh it once the product is dry. It's the actual weight of the product, right? Okay, so now that the water is right around 95 to 100 degrees Celsius, what we could do is start adding a small amount of hot water so we're gonna use a plastic pipette and we're gonna add a small amount of water. We're gonna swirl it until it dissolves. We're gonna add some more. If you feel like this, the um, flask with NBS is starting to cool down, you could actually place it on the hot plate slightly to keep it warm. Right take a look you still have some that is not completely dissolved the most important part that to keep in mind is that you want the minimum amount that allows it all to dissolve it's not completely dissolved yet all right and if you put the water to the sides that will move anything that you know, wild swirling moved upwards. You want to make sure you keep swirling as you add the water and then take a look whether or not it has completely dissolved. It looks like it's not completely dissolved, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually let it warm up a little bit to help it dissolve. I had cooled down the water, so it may be slightly less than 95 at the moment. So let's take a look. I want to make sure the crude NBS completely dissolves in hot water so we can heat the flask slightly on the hot plate. I'm going to go ahead and add a few drops more. 
and if you take a look it's not completely um, soluble yet so we may need to add a little bit more hot water I was able to hold the flask because I didn't leave it on the hot plate that long so it wasn't really hot to my touch although the water I mean the flask that has the water in it is definitely hot so you do not want to touch it some more water swirl it um, they're not completely soluble yet if you take a look inside so let's just warm it up I notice the solution has somewhat of a yellow color for the crude MBS so now the idea is that our compound of interest that we're trying to recrystallize, which is NBS, is soluble in the hot solvent and then it's insoluble as we allow it to cool slowly into room temperature and then being placed in ice. Right, and that slow cooling that will take place is really important to allow the crystals to um, form without any impurities present. you continue to wait for the solution to cool down to room temperature what you could do is go ahead and prepare an ice bath Once the crystals are forming, what you'll notice, so what we did is we added the hot water as our, as our recrystallization solvent, and when it's in solution, it was soluble, and as that solution begins to cool, the solubility of um, pure NBS begins to decrease, and what you notice is that NBS will basically precipitate out, meaning that the pure crystals will begin to grow right then we can collect them by filtration but before we collect them to kind of um, allow the formation of pure crystal even further what we're going to do is place it in a ice bath okay so we're going to take our solution or we're going to take the solution and what we'll do is place it right within the ice bath cold water to wash the solution so you also want um, some cold water on ice all right so as I'm getting ready to pour off the recrystallized solution what I want to do is make sure that I take off the top part of the Bushner funnel along with the weighing paper and weigh it. Alright, so I weighed it and it weighed exactly 15.28 grams. So now what I could do is use some of the cold water that's present on ice and what I want to do is wet the weight 
the you know the filter paper that's in the questionnaire funnel. And then yeah, turn it on the vacuum. Right? I'll turn it on as soon as I'm ready to put in my recrystallized MBS. Again, the whole idea of recrystallization is that we're trying to purify a given solid that has, you know, a small amount of impurity. It's typically a very last step in an experiment. Right, we'll have a later experiment in the term where we do a recrystallization step towards the end. All right, so now that we've let it sit for some time on ice, and here's our solution. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pour the solution right over the Boschner funnel, but first what we'd like to do is turn on the vacuum. All right, and if you notice the water um, drops right to the bottom of the flask as soon as you turn on the vacuum. Right? What we're gonna do is pour the solution right in here, and if you attempt to pour the solution quickly, what you'll notice is that the solid, it's a lot easier when you're pouring the solution to kind of dump it a lot quicker and that allows um, for the solid part to drop as well. And if you still have anything remaining within the flask, you could use a small amount of cold water that we had placed on ice and you could wash off the sides and then pour it right in. So if you do want to use about five milliliters of water to wash off any excess solution off of the crystals. All right, here's a closer look at the crystals of pure NBS, and that's really the filtrate. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna um, turn off the vacuum in a minute and allow it to air dry for about 15 minutes before um, taking its weight and determining its melting point to assess its purity. All right, so now that we're ready to weigh the dried recrystallized product, you want to make sure you tear the balance so it's at zero and we are going to place it right here and record the mass. Right? So we're exactly at 16.60. And here's our recrystallized product. Again, here is the mass. All right, so what we're gonna do is get some of the product into the capillary tubes to take the melting temperature. All, right. All you have to do is tap it. You wanna fill it two to three millimeters, All right? And then, what you'll do all right so now we have the product right at the bottom of our capillary tube all right waste disposal is quite important in where we place it so what we're going to do is we're going to place our filtrate in the non-halogenated aqueous waste. 